Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Okay, so firstly, thank you to all of you who's clicked to watch this video. I do appreciate it. And if you are new here, please click that subscribe button. Turn it from red to grey. Do it right now. Unless, of course, you're a Deontay Wilder fanatical fan. I wouldn't bother, okay, because this video is probably going to really hurt your feelings. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing fantastic. Now, apologies for the lack of videos as far as boxing news is concerned during this week. I've been aware of my family, so the videos that you have had are ones that I pre-recorded and scheduled to upload while I was away. So I hope they're okay to keep you tied over. Anyway, I'm back home now, so back to business. Malik Scott, Deontay Wilder's former opponent, who took a dive in my opinion, and now his new head trainer has said that Dillian White, the body snatcher, WBC interim world heavyweight champion, is stylistically a tougher fight for Deontay Wilder than the unified champion in Anthony Joshua. His reasoning is that Anthony Joshua is a bigger tar target to hit. And because Anthony Joshua is fundamentally better than Dillian White, that makes him more vulnerable to get clipped by Deontay Wilder. Now, Firstly, when it comes to Dillian White and Anthony Joshua, both of these guys would absolutely pummel and murder Deontay Wilder, in my opinion. But as much as I am a fan of theirs, of course, yes, I'm a fan of uh, Tyson Fury in that as well. I know some Fury fanatics say, you hate Tyson Fury because you criticise him. How can you call him a fan? Well, you just answered your own question because you're a fanatic. That's why I can criticise those fighters that I do like. But... In my opinion, both Anthony Joshua and Dillian White would absolutely obliterate Deontay Wilder. But I'm realistic because I do know, or I do feel at least, that if Deontay Wilder lands flush on either Anthony Joshua or Dillian White, it's a very good chance that both of these fellas go down and they don't get back up again. Now, I've interviewed Dillian countless times. I mean, I haven't spoken to him in, in a little while, actually. Don't know why. Dillian, call me. But... He said on quite a few occasions when he's been speaking about uh, Deontay Wilder, that Wilder is vulnerable. He's vulnerable around the whiskers where, sure, he does carry that explosive power, but it's speed. It's not power, by the way. It's speed. It's the David Hay effect. I've said that pl like uh, plenty of times. But he can clean your clock. Of course he can, from e e whether it be in round one or round 12. But he's fantastic against cab drivers and journeymen and gatekeepers. He's fantastic um, against those kind of guys. But... Deontay Wilder fights scared. This is what uh, Dillian White said. He doesn't like being pressured backwards. And of course, me and Dillian, we've had these conversations quite a few times over the past couple of years, even way before Tyson Fury done what he'd done. Okay. Now, Wilder, he's always been vulnerable. Okay. Now, he ain't great around the whiskers. Okay. We know that. He's always been a lot waiting to happen. He's been a ticking time bomb for quite some time. And the best way to look at it is that while I can admit that if Wilder lands on Joshua and Dini White, it's a very good chance that they go down and won't get back up again. The Wilder, it's a twerk army, the Wilder fans probably can't see or admit that if Anthony Joshua or Dini White land on Deontay Wilder, there's a very good chance he's going to go down and not get back up also. But they can't see that because they think he's like Superman, much like um, a lot of the uh, Tyson Fury absolute nut huggers. But when it comes down to it, it's dangerous for all of these guys. Of course it is. But for me, and I've said it for a long, long time now, if you, if all the money in the world, such as 100 million, can't get Deontay Wilder in the ring of Anthony Joshua for undisputed, then what can? Okay? If Deontay Wilder, which of course he has done with when it comes to Dillian White, he has publicly said, if you fight Lewis Ortiz, beat Lewis Ortiz, you got me next. You got my word for it. Now, that's only half the story because... That's the story that his fanatical fans will tell you, but they won't tell you the rest of the story where Dillian White actually went back to Deontay Wilder and said, okay, cool, I'll fight Luis Ortiz and I'll knock him out. But you've got to sign a contract that says that you will fight me next and nobody else. Wilder refused. That's the part that they don't tell you. But again, when it comes to Fury and Deontay Wilder, both of these guys have turned down Anthony Joshua for Undisputed and they both turned down Dillian White. Yes, Tyson Fury turned down the uh, WBC diamond belt. And, of course, he was ordered by the WBC as well. But yeah, he got rewarded for, um, as being mandatory and, and taken off Dillian White. How's that work, eh? Anyway, what can you do? Deontay Wilder's made a career out of 
not fighting the top guys. Now, when it comes to Anthony Joshua, is he a bigger target than Dillian White? Now, he's two inches taller than Dillian White, but is he a bigger target than Dillian White? I'll probably say no, because Dillian White is, well, I mean, for those of you who've seen him fight and have been anywhere even close to him, he's like a walking wardrobe. This guy is huge. He's massive. Whereas Joshua, of course, he's a big old unit himself, but he's a bit more slender. So from that perspective, you could probably say that Dillian White is probably a bigger target than Anthony Joshua. But at the same time, maybe Matt Scott is talking about because Anthony Joshua is fundamentally very good, that means you do have to think all the time what you're going to do. And Joshua does. He does like to take his time. He does like to think. Dillian White does too, but at times Dillian White, he will just see red mist and go for it. And that makes it a problem. But of course, that can also be his Achilles heel. He can get clipped. He can get put down. Okay, but I know some Fury fans, they won't accept this, but the reason why Dillian White, he gets clipped is, is pretty much for the same reason why Tyson Fury, he's, he found himself laying on his back quite a few times in the ring as well because they both at times switch off. So if Dillian White switches off against Jontae Wilder, then yeah, of course, there's a very realistic chance that uh, Jontae Wilder is going to catch Dillian White and, and, uh, and he'll go down and he may not get back up again. But there again, maybe he would. Who knows? I mean, for me, I think that uh, Dillian White's got a better chin than Tyson Fury. Oh, Fury fanatics don't like that one. But when it comes to it with Anthony Joshua, is he an easier fight than Dillian White? Well, if he really thinks so, then why is it that Wilder's never fought him before? Why is it that he's turned down 100 million to fight him for Undisputed? Now, Wilder's fanatical fans of Wildettes, they will make all the kind of excuses in the world, but none of them are good enough. Wilder's made a career out of ducking Anthony Joshua. He's made a career out of talking about Anthony Joshua. I'll do this and I'll do that. It's how easy Anthony Joshua is. It's so easy. You turned down 100 million, boy. I mean, come on. Malik Scott, he knows. Okay, he knows that Anthony Joshua or Dillian White start pressuring Deontay Wilder, land on Deontay Wilder. Wilder ain't going to get out of round three or round four. Latest round five, latest. And I'll say that because if you look at it with, uh, say, Tyson Fury, as skillful as what he is and as elusive as what he is, and, he's a, and of course, he's a big old unit himself. He's a big old boy. But he don't punch anywhere near as hard as Dillian White or Anthony Joshua. So if Anthony Joshua and Dillian White get hold of Wilder, what if it's going to happen? If Fury can bounce Wilder around the canvas like a ping pong ball, like he done in the rematch, what do you think that White, that, uh, White and Joshua would do? Pummel him. Destroy him. They won't just bounce him around. They'll splatter him through the canvas. Which is why I've been calling for the fight for a long time, especially with uh, Dillian White, that I've been calling for that fight for a long, long time because I do feel, stylistically, Wilder's easy work for Dillian White. If I'm wrong on that one, cool. Let's see the fight. Let's see Deontay Wilder go in there and smooth out Dillian White. Let's see it. Prove me wrong. And I'll make a video going, yeah, okay, I was wrong. But I'm probably never going to make that video because we're probably never going to see the fight. Because firstly, I don't think uh, Wilder is going to get past Tyson Fury. But even if he does, is he going to go fight Dillian White? Not on your Nelly. He's frightened of him. Is he going to fight Anthony Joshua? Well, if you turn down 100 million, what makes you think he's going to accept any kind of offer? What kind of money could possibly be on the table now as both Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder have taken bad losses? A loss each. But, of course, at this point, if Deontay Wilder beats Fury, then yes, he can say that he avenged his defeat. Like Anthony Joshua can say that he avenged his defeat against Andy Ruiz Jr. But is the need for that fight as great now? as what it once was, even if Wilder got the WBC belt back, you probably have to say no. So if he turned down 100 million, would he even get a 100 million offer again? I doubt it. And the reason why Tyson Fury got more than that offered for Anthony Joshua is because it's Tyson Fury. It's an all Brit classic, isn't it? It's an all Brit barn burner. Wilder, he can't sell out a ticket in a phone booth. He really can't. Anyway, that's Matt Scott's thoughts. He believes that Dillian White is a tougher fight for Deontay Wilder, meaning that Dillian White will probably just go for it without thinking too much. He'll just go for it. And there's a very good chance that uh, he'll end up getting that left hook through on Wilder. Anthony Joshua is a bit more patient, which is obviously going to give Wilder a bit more time. Do you agree with him or do you not? Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you on the next video.